talk about inverse functions one to one and stuff like that. So we'll start with this example where we got some function f of x is seven x minus two. You should be familiar with this form of a graph. So now remember what the slope of this graph is. It's good, good old slope intercept form y equals seven x minus two. What's the slope? Seven. Good, the slope is seven and the y-intercept is negative two. You can see where it crosses the y-axis, zero, negative two. But what if we tried to find the inverse of that graph? Now, there were several steps in finding the inverse, the first of which is to replace f of x by y. The second of these steps was to interchange x and y. And then the third of these steps is to solve for y. So I'd probably add two to both sides here and get something like this. What's the last step that I need to do to solve for y? Divide by seven. Divide by seven. And the final step to get the problem completely right would be to replace this y here by f inverse. So it's f inverse of x equals x plus two over seven. So we've got a function up here and the inverse down here. So your function and the inverse. And slowly I wanna try and build up in your mind an idea of what the inverse is and does. But one of the properties of the inverse that I want you to see is something that relates to their graph. So let's take a quick look at their graphs. Here's the graph of the function, and here's the graph of the inverse. Now you can start to see some symmetry in this if you start looking closely. For instance, this passes through the point zero, negative two, this passes through negative two and zero. Okay, how about the y-intercept? zero and 0.2886, and then should be 0.2886 and zero. So all you're doing is you're interchanging the X and Y coordinates. And when you do that, you're effectively reflecting this graph around the line Y equals X. So if I put in that graph Y equals X, I'll do that right here. You can in your mind reflect this graph around that line and the black line is gonna become the red line right there. And you can, saw that, you can see that these points are mirror images of each other around that line. All you're doing is you're interchanging the X and Y coordinates. But there's a little bit more to say about the story of the function and the inverse. So let's see it over here. One of the types of problems you're gonna to have to face in WebAssign is gonna ask you to calculate f composed with f inverse of x. And I'm gonna do that for this particular set of functions, f and f inverse. So the first thing that we'll do is we'll rewrite it in a little bit more of a user-friendly face or version, I should say. And that is write it as f of f inverse of x. The first function goes on the outside, the second one goes on the inside. But now web assign is gonna give you something like this. It's gonna give you a set of open parentheses. And it's gonna ask you to fill those in. So how do I fill those in? Well, I'll fill them in with the definition for F. Oh, excuse me, no, actually I gotta go down here to F inverse. So F inverse is X plus two over seven. So all I did is I replaced this with the right-hand side of F inverse. Okay, good. Let's keep going. Let's look at the rule for F of X. The rule for F of X is whatever I put in here, so whatever I put in for X, I get to multiply by seven and then subtract two. So the next thing you're gonna see from WebAssign is something like this. Seven times something minus two. What's that something? What do you have to put in here? 
the inverse function? Yeah, the inverse function. This part right here, x plus 2 over 7. Now, my morning class was a little bit nervous about this, so let me put in an extra step. Mm -hmm. What was my extra step? I just wrote the seven as seven over one. So effectively, you're multiplying a fraction by another fraction. Now, there's several ways you can do this. What I would suggest is you make it simple on yourself. If you were to, if you were to multiply, say, mm, three over seven, times 21 over five, the smart thing to do would be to cancel the seven. Say, okay, well that's seven goes to seven once and seven goes into here three times. So three times three is nine over five. Well, we're gonna do that same kind of smart thing down here, but how? Is there any cancellation I can do? There's a seven on the top on the left and then in parentheses, there's a seven on the bottom. Yeah, the seven and the seven, both of those cancel. So you're not gonna see this step. They're not gonna bother to just write something over one, but maybe that helps you feel a little bit more comfortable about the fact that you can cancel that. So thanks for the help there. Now, when you do cancel that, what's left? Well, a one, which I'm not gonna write, another one here, which I'm not gonna write, it's left with x plus two, and then what? Minus two. Now, does this simplify any further? It does. Can anyone tell me what this simplifies to? What's two minus just two? X? Yeah, just X, right? Because the twos cancel each other out. You got two and a minus two. They're like terms, they're opposite in sign, so they cancel each other out. Hey, and that's it, there's your answer. So the stuff in green is the stuff that you're gonna have to be putting into WebAssign. It's going to ask you, okay, I've got it written like this. Well, what's the next step? Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm going to write in what F inverse is. We knew that. Then you take that and you put in your function for F. Seven times that. That works out nice. Then cancel things. You should get a cascade of simplification that brings you down to X. Are we okay with that first part? I have a question for you, please. Go ahead, Z. All right, thank you. So um, the first part, we were finding the uh, inverse of the f 7x minus 2, right? Yes. And, and um, you introduced then that uh, WebAssign might ask to find the inverse, the f I don't know if I'm saying that right, but the function of f inverse. Yep. OK, mm -hmm. and so it's just you're saying that we would, this is the process for doing that? Yeah, so this, okay. is, this is what you would end up having to put into WebAssign. So I don't know how well it's displaying there on your end, but I tried to write it in two different colors. No, it did, the it stuff, did a great job. Okay, thank you. The, the stuff that I put in green is the stuff that you'll be entering into WebAssign. Okay, so it's going to have some of the notation built in for you. Mm -hmm. And the stuff that I put in green is the stuff that you'll be responsible for entering. Now, if this was a test, you know, if it was a face-to-face -face class, you'd just be writing this stuff out for yourself. You wouldn't be given prompts like this, but it kind of helps you out. So I'm just showing you how WebAssign is going to work. I'm going to repeat that example with doing things the opposite direction. So let me give myself a little space here. We're going to do it the other way. We'll do F inverse composed with F of X. Now, once again, 
the function that's first goes on the outside. So it's going to be f inverse of f of x. And kind of like the last time, you're going to start by working with the innermost parentheses. The innermost parentheses have an f of x. So what could I replace f of x with? Well, what was it defined as? Can we look back up on their papers? Um, 7x minus 2? Minus 1? Oh, wait, it's minus 2. Minus 2, yeah, thank you. 7x minus 2. Nice. So now we got the 7x minus 2. We're going to go to the rule for f inverse. Now, here it is right here. The rule for f inverse says whatever I put here, I'm going to add 2 and then divide that whole thing by 7. So web assign is going to do probably something like this. It's going to say, OK, you're going to add 2 to something and then divide by 7. What is it that you're adding to? Two. Is it x? Not x. Yeah, x minus two. Yeah, this whole thing right here. That's seven x minus two. I replace x by seven x minus two on the left hand side. So I got to do the same thing on the right hand side. So that means I'll get seven x minus two plus two. Now, does this simplify? The numerator simplified. Does that simplify at all? Well, that turns into 7x, right? Yeah, turns into 7x. So again, I'm writing the stuff in green that you would end up writing. Does this simplify any further? Mm -hmm. X, right? Just X. X. Just X. Now that's unusual. Usually speaking, if you do a function and then another function, if you put two functions together, usually you get different things. The order makes a difference. They're not commutative is the fancy word. But in this case, we get the same thing both times. And that says something special about these two functions. It says that they're inverses of each other. Now, let me give you kind of a quick feel for why what's happening is happening. So let's take two points. I'll call one x and I'll call one y. A function, call it f, takes a value of x and gives you a value for y. You give it an input, it gives you an output. The inverse function goes the opposite direction. So the inverse function says, all right, I'll start out with this and I'll give you this. I can start out with, for instance, the street address and give you the mile road, that kind of thing. So that's our inverse function. Now, what we're doing here is you're doing one and then the other. So for like my first example, if I started out with this, if I start out with f of f inverse, then it's saying, okay, start out here, apply f inverse, and then apply f. And when you do that, you get back to where you started from, which in this case was x. If you do things the other direction, if you do f and then f inverse, again, you're getting back to where you started from. So when you see Say for instance, f of f inverse of x gives you x and f inverse of f of x gives you x. That's because these are inverse functions. That's when this kind of thing is gonna happen. Um, I have a question. Yeah, Courtney, go ahead, please. Okay. Um, this is probably silly, but the way you wrote it, I was thinking we could, uh, the 7x minus 2 plus 2, it has the parentheses there. I was thinking that that was a married couple. That would it's be not? If, we were, if That would be if we were canceling here. Now, it's a good question, and I probably should have put in another little step here that I did for my morning class. I don't necessarily need 
the parentheses around this, right? It's not like I'm distributing anything. So how about if I just write it as 7x minus 2 plus 2, like that? Yeah, that's helpful because when you wrote it with the parentheses there, I was confused. I was yeah. like, wait, that's a married term, but okay. Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's, a good, it's a good question here. So when I get rid of the parentheses, then, then it's clear that these two things are going to add up to zero, leave me with 7x, and then the sevens cancel. Yeah. Right. For instance, where you're talking about the married couples, that kind of thing, I can't cancel this seven and this seven because it's inside the parentheses. Or even, even up here, I can't cancel the seven and the seven until um, I simplify this. So, yeah, appreciate the, the comments. Thank you. Now, are we okay with uh, the function and the inverse stuff? You've seen what you're going to have to put in. Now, there's one last thing that I want to mention here, and that is when we look at this stuff graphically, we've already seen a little bit about what to expect. You got your function, you got your inverse. Now, when I, when I graph the inverse, so let's just put up the graph of the inverse. The inverse is a function, right? How do you tell if something's a function? It passes what kind of test? The vertical line test. The vertical line test, perfect. So this passes the vertical line test. But I didn't actually have to calculate this function to see that it would pass the vertical line test. That's because the original function passes the horizontal line test. So if a horizontal line touches your graph at most once, touches your function at most once, then this function will have an inverse function. So that's nice. When it passes the horizontal line test, it's said to be a one-to-one -one function. So anything that passes the horizontal line test is a one-to-one -one function. They're nice to work with. So let's take a look at a couple examples here. Let's take a look at the square root function. Does this pass the horizontal line test? What do you think? Don't make Courtney do all the work. It looks like yes. Yeah, looking good to me. Any horizontal line that you can draw through there is gonna strike the graph at most once. Beautiful. The nice thing about that is that it's telling me that this will have an inverse function. If I tried to plot the inverse function, it would look like this. That's the inverse function. And that passes the vertical line test, which is what I wanted. So if your function passes the horizontal line test, then the inverse will pass the vertical line test. And you don't, you don't even have to draw the inverse function to see that. Let's try one more like that. Does this graph pass the horizontal line test? No. No. But it is a function. It just doesn't pass the horizontal line test. So if I actually tried to calculate the inverse here, this would be the graph of the inverse. Is the inverse a function? Yes. Mm. Oh, no, it doesn't pass the vertical line test. Yeah, it doesn't pass the vertical line test. And you know what? We could have predicted that back here because this didn't pass the horizontal line test. If your function doesn't pass the horizontal line test, then the inverse is not going to pass the vertical line test. And let me put them both up here together and show you that the function and the inverse are just mirror images around the line y equals x. Those two are mirror images. You'll see symmetric points. So here I got the point negative two, zero. Here I should have the point zero, negative two. And so on. Zero, negative four should be a point here, negative four, zero. 
and you're gonna have all kinds of these mirror image points because that's what happens when you're looking at the graph of a function and its inverse. But this function doesn't actually have an inverse function. So there was one more example like that in the homework and it was, is an example like, and this, they asked, is this relation a one-to-one -one function? Now, it might be hard to visualize just by looking at it here, but you can plot those points in Desmos or just uh, by hand, and it would look like this. This is a function that passes the vertical line test but is it a one-to-one -one function? That is, does it pass the horizontal line test? No. No, thank you, Michael. It fails the horizontal line test. And in fact, if you were to look at the inverse, there's the inverse. The inverse fails the vertical line test. So passing the horizontal line test means you have a one-to-one -one function. And this one's not a one-to-one -one function. Okay, are we good here? That's a nice little bonus session for this section. Let me stop here and get you into your breakout rooms.